Throughout human history, there have been battles between the forces of good and evil. Today's list is all about the people that were so evil we truly wish they never existed. From awful world leaders to minions of demise, today's list features people we wish never got the opportunity to thrive. If you can call it that. So without further ado, let us review our top 10 evil people from history we wish were never born. Number 10, Tomas de Torquemada. Ever heard of the Spanish Inquisition? Well, this guy was one of its star killers. Not only do we wish it never happened in the first place, it did, so we might as well talk about it and learn from it. But we can't discuss the Inquisition without mentioning Tomas, who was responsible for thousands of deaths. He gave people two choices. Either join the Catholic Church or die, which led to thousands of Jewish and Islamic people being exiled from Spain. He played the role of inquisitor and was in charge of investigating and punishing heretics. He oversaw the burning of thousands of innocent people, as Tomas often used cruel methods of extracting confessions from people he believed to be heretics. He seemed to almost enjoy his job hanging, burning, suffocating, and tormenting people with the rack and waterboarding. No one knows exactly how many people died during the Inquisition, but historians estimate anywhere between 30,000 to 300,000. Pretty, pretty wide gap there. Number nine, Caligula. Man, his name is too fun to say. Too bad he wasn't a fun guy. It's better I tell you now that essentially this list is a depiction of what happens when the wrong people get their hands on power. From 37 AD to 41 AD, Caligula ruled as if he was some kind of mad god that needed to be satisfied. Not only did his addiction to gambling cause a nightmare for the economy, he seemed to delight in suffering. In the first three months of his rule, he made his people sacrifice 160,000 animals in his name. When he first took over as ruler, people actually liked him though. He made helpful political reforms and were called exiles, but most people blame his future tyranny on a brain fever that befell him later on. He blew money on lavish projects, some still helpful like aqueducts, to building a two mile long floating bridge across the Bay of Bali so he could ride his horse across it day after day. He even ordered his men to attack the sea by collecting shells with their helmets. His lascivious love affairs included copulating with the wives of his allies and even allegedly his own sisters. Caligula's reign was equal parts terrifying and embarrassing, which is probably why his officers stabbed him to death. Number 8, Leopold II of Belgium. During the height of colonialism, Leopold of Belgium wanted to make his mark by conquering the African Congo. As soon as I said colonialism, you know, you know where things are going, so get ready. He made it his property and instead of, you know, being a good human being, he decided to establish a dictatorship instead. He made the rest of Europe think that he was acting as a good guy, so they'd give him money, then proceeded to hire mercenaries. These mercenaries were set with the task of draining as much money from the state by enforcing free labor camps. Anyone who disobeyed or failed to meet demands were severely punished and even had their limbs removed. Leopold was responsible for the deaths of 20% of the population and thankfully was stopped before he could do more damage. Roger Casement, after doing a little digging, released a report which detailed the horrors he had committed under the guise of philanthropy. He was forced to surrender the Congo, though it was considered a part of Belgium until the 1950s. <sighs> Whew, buckle up folks, it only gets worse from here. It's number 7 and we're already at Genghis Khan. Get ready. Genghis Khan, ruler of the Mongolian Empire, killed so many people. He changed the carbon footprint of the earth. In one single battle, he killed over 1.2 million people. Though this sounds like an exaggeration, I don't find it hard to believe, since he just left the corpses to rot, the battlefields became oily and whole mounds of like mountains of bodies formed. Genghis Khan was supposedly responsible for over 40 million deaths. If you need a number to compare that to, that's the same amount of people who died in World War I altogether. He also enjoyed in excess the spoils of war, brutalizing women and assaulting them. In addition to that, he held mass beauty contests and all those who didn't win would be given to his soldiers like objects. Mm. Because of that, around 16 million people are said to be descendants of him today. That's how many people he... Yeah. Many people blame his brutal and ruthless upbringing as Khan very much had to raise himself under the mentality to kill or be killed. He even killed his own brother at age 10 just for not sharing food. He was also horrendous when it came to tormenting his betrayers. Some ways include pouring molten silver down their throats and sawing people in half while they were still alive. Oh, and he killed 75% of the population of Iran and tried to commit an entire genocide. Yeah. 
The list goes on, but so does this list, and there is more to come, so. Let's go. Number six, Talat Pasha. Pasha was the Grand Vizier to the Sultan of the Ottoman Empire in the early 20th century and was the main architect of the Armenian Genocide. When Armenian families were evicted from their homes in 1915, his signature was on the orders. On April 24th, they executed several hundred intellectuals in order to begin Turkifying the country. Many were sent through the Mesopotamian desert on death marches without food or water after being stripped naked so the sun would just boil them alive. Anyone who stopped walking was shot. He also created a special organization made of killers and ex convicts who were ordered to carry out the liquidation of the Christian elements. They drowned people in rivers, threw civilians off cliffs, even crucified and burned people alive. Yep, this happened in the 1900s, by the way. So there are about 600,000 to 1.5 million reasons we wish this man never existed because that is how many people Pasha was responsible for killing. Ooh, man. Number five, Idi Amin. General Idi Amin staged a coup on January 25th, 1971 and forced Uganda's first prime minister, Milton Obo, into exile. From there, he created a reign of terror that abused Uganda's freedom after more than 70 years of British rule. Amin organized mass executions of Akoli and Lango Christian tribes who were loyal to Obo. He terrorized his own country with internal security forces whose main purpose was to eliminate those who opposed him. His brutality also resulted in the collapse of the economy, this man just seemed like he just didn't have a single good bone in his body. He was also rumored to have eaten human flesh and his vicious and inhumane rule resulted in the death of 300,000 civilians. Eventually Amin was forced to flee and sought refuge in Saudi Arabia, though he was never punished for his crimes and died in 2003 due to organ failure. So he got away with it, essentially. Number 4, Pol Pot. Hmm. You'd think a leader's job would be to protect and serve their country with love and respect, but I guess Pol Pot didn't see it that way. Originally named Salah Sar, Pot was the leader of the Khmer Rouge totalitarian regime during 1975 to 79 in Cambodia, though technically longer. It was a radical communist government who caused the death of more than 2 million people through forced labor, starvation, disease, torment, persecution, and execution. He wanted to purify society and wanted to extinguish capitalism, western culture, city life, religion, and all foreign influences in order to form a pure communist regime. All media outlets along with embassies and external medical help were refused and essentially he barricaded Cambodia into their own little world. Education was halted, healthcare eliminated, it was crazy. The people were forced into slave labor on the killing fields, only allowed 180 grams of rice a day. Deadly purges were conducted to eliminate remnants of the old society including monks, police, doctors, lawyers, teachers, ex-soldiers along with their families and former government officials. His cruelty and madness knew no bounds. It took years for him to finally be put under house arrest by his peers and was never truly punished for his crimes against humanity. He died of a heart attack in 1998 following his arrest. So yeah. And we're reaching our top three. <laughs> I bet you thought, I bet you thought number three was going to be number one. Nope, there were worse people than him, believe it or not. Number three, we have Adolf. I can't say his last name because apparently YouTube won't let me, which is ridiculous. So he's not Voldemort, but you know who I'm talking about, that really evil German guy. Yeah. I don't really need to go into detail here unless you don't know about one of the most infamous genocides to take place in all of history. Along with the amount of people Adolf's army killed in World War II, his warped and disgusting worldview resulted in the destruction of more than 6 million lives, mainly those of Jewish descent but LGBTQ, political prisoners, and basically anyone he and his followers deemed a lesser human. He was the personification of hatred and led the world into one of the most deadly wars to date. We should also give a shout out to all of his henchmen who served underneath him, all working together to enact one of the cruelest moments in history. If he hadn't been born, who knows if it would have happened anyways due to political and social tensions at the time, but maybe, just maybe, it wouldn't have happened at all and all those lives would still be around today. Number two, guys, like I knew he was bad, but 
dug deep today, dug deep today, and I did not, I would never, never thought I would say this, but number two, Joseph Stalin. Joseph Stalin made his own henchman disappear in photos, and boy do we wish it was him instead. Stalin was the premier of the Soviet Union and was responsible for the deaths of more than 20 million, 20 million of his own people, double that if you count World War II. He ruled for 30 years and ruled with an iron fist, eliminating anyone who opposed him, and as you can guess, there were many. In 1927 and 1929, he had 1 million people exiled or imprisoned, 9 to 11 million were forced off their lands, and 3 million peasants were arrested or exiled in the mass collectivization program. 6 to 7 million were killed by artificial famine in the 1930s. During 1936 to 1938, he executed approximately 750,000 during the Great Terror, a brutal political campaign to remove dissenters and any others he considered a threat. He was so paranoid. This guy had no regard for human life whatsoever. While the world was focused on Adolf, he was doing all of this, and he was fighting on the Allies' side. Though he started supporting Hitler, and then he came onto our side. Anyways. Mm. It is estimated that Stalin orchestrated the deaths of 60 million people, which means about 40,000 people died every week during his raid. Need I say more? And if you think that's bad. Number one spot, Mao Zedong. Ready? I don't think anyone can be. Mao Zedong during 1966 to 1976 turned China into a house of fear by eradicating 65 million people. In his attempt for a socialist China, he killed anyone that got in his way, kind of like Stalin, through execution and mass starvation. His biggest threat was the intellect. And revered Emperor Shi Huang, who buried 460 scholars and sought to surpass him by burying alive 46,000 scholars. Yeah, my stomach turned when I read that. That's awful. He coined his operation the Great Leap Forward. To combat rising resistance, he created the Red Army, composed of girls and boys from the ages of 14 to 21, to roam cities and target enemies of the state, especially their teachers. He would make the teachers wear dunce hats, cover their faces with ink, and make them crawl on all fours and bark like dogs. He also expanded a system of a thousand forced labor camps. Most amazing fam, I could go on, but I honestly don't have room. It just seems like there's no end to all the awful things that he did. For all these reasons and more, Mao is of course in our number one spot. Oh God, the world would definitely be a different place if these people weren't born. Perhaps we'd be in a better place, or maybe someone worse was waiting in the sidelines, who knows. Both good and evil are inevitable, but hopefully we might be able to tell the difference next time sooner rather than later. If you like this video, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, and comment. I've been your host, Rachel Fisher, and until next time, guys, take care. Cheers. He made the rest of Europe think that he was acting as a ph philanthropist. Oh, he made the rest of Europe think that he was being a nice guy and acting as a philanthropist. Why can't I say that word? <laughs> a philanthropist. He made the rest of Europe think that he was acting as a philanthropist. <laughs> okay. He made the rest of Europe think that he was acting as a philanthropist. I'm just gonna give it up.